Hey guys, it's me and today I'm here with my September wrap up. It's a bit of a more of a casual setting because I'm currently on my lunch break in between two classes and this video has to go up today. And if I wait till after class, well, I won't have any daylight left to film with. So <laughs> I'm going to do it on my lunch break. Let's begin with stats. In the month of September, I read 11 books, which amounted to 3,364 pages. And of those 11 books, I owned four. Then for the TBR challenges I put myself at the beginning of the year, I'm not that strict on them anymore than like in the beginning of the year, but I still like keeping track of it, I guess. I read one book out of my comfort zone, four sequels, one new book, and two TBR vets. With star ratings, I had one one star, three three stars, three four stars, and four five stars, which I believe this is one of like the only months this year that I've had the most five stars, but that's great. I read 10 books by a female author and one book by I believe a non-binary author, but I'm not entirely sure, but I've written it down as author. Then I have nine YA books and two adult books for age range, and then for genre I have five contemporaries, four fantasies, one non-fiction, and one graphic novel. I did do a mid-month wrap-up, so I'm gonna go over those books really quickly as well. Oh wait, and the mid-month wrap-up will be linked down below so you can go check it out. First book I read in the month of September is Love Live by Alice Oseman, which I gave a five, which I gave out of five stars. Then I did a reread of A Torch Against Nine by Sabat Vahir, which I also gave out of five stars. Then I read The Deep by River Solomon, which I gave four to five stars. And then I read A Repo at the Gate by Sabat Vahir, which I gave five out of five stars. Then I read A Thief Among the Trees, an Emily Ashes graphic novel by Sabat Vahir, Nicole Andelfinger, and Sonia Liao, which I gave four to five stars. Then I read This Figured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Space by Amanda Duke, which I gave three out of five stars. And then I read Pretty Funny for a Girl by Rebecca Elliott, which I got a galley of Jeanette Galley, and I gave one star. Okay, now we're caught up. So that leaves me with four books left to talk about, only one of which I owned. So I guess it's gonna be pretty quick of a video because one of them is also a novella. But yeah, the first book I read in the second half of the month which by the way the second half of the month i also started college so that's why it's less than in the first half the first one i read is kid of scars by Libra Dugo, which gave two out of five stars this book follows nikolai nina and zoya on their adventures after their respective series um, so it takes place after the question trilogy and the sixth course trilogy so you need to have read both because otherwise this will heavily spoil you um, and also just think you'll be confused because this really doesn't really do much for rehashing of the other series. This is the first in a duology. I'm not going to say that much more about it because spoilers. But I actually, I don't know, I felt a little bit meh about this book. Just one of my five star predictions. Which I only have two more to read so I want to kind of get through those as well. And then just finally wrap it up because it's over a year ago that I made that video. Yeah, this is one of my five star predictions and it disappointed a bit. I just, I don't know, I wasn't that engaged into the story was a little bit bored throughout the entire book and it's not like nothing happened because there were quite a lot of like events like it wasn't interesting to me because they did a lot of world building that I thought was interesting but for some reason I just I don't know I didn't really feel attached to anything happening in the plot which is a shame because I love Nina and Nikolai and I did in their original series and I did in here I loved reading from Nikolai's perspective that was the first time and then from Nina we've read before in the sixth course trilogy but I just love following them a lot and then Zoya, even though I don't like her, I did really like following her perspective because I think she brings an interesting perspective on this world and I really enjoyed that. And then the plot overall was interesting and like I said I did a lot of world building that I appreciate. So I will be reading the second one when it comes out because I am curious to see how the story is going to go and eventually how Nina's story connects with Nikolai's and Zoya's because in this book they're very separate. And the next book I read is Quiet No More by Nikki Bottomless, which is another galley I got from Nikolai. I gave two out of five stars. This book is a sequel to The Quiet You Carry. The Quiet You Carry is about a girl who gets put into the foster system because her, her father kicked her out of the house. And her father claims it's because the main character made like advances on him, but the social workers don't believe that story and they're trying to get the real story out of our main character when our main character doesn't want to talk and for the rest it's kind of about her like you know, internalizing what happened to her and also about starting at a new school and kind of trying to keep this sense of normalcy instead of just being like oh that's the kid from foster 
I, I come from foster home. I read and loved the first book last year. And then this one was a little bit disappointing in my case. I don't know, I just feel like there was too much going on. In this one, there's a storyline with a father, a storyline with an aunt, a storyline with a stepmom, and a stepsister, a storyline, just her going to college, a storyline with a boyfriend. It, it's all too much. And I feel like none of the things actually got like the proper time that they needed to, to really, you know, make an impact and do something. I feel like now it's just all kind of like ground surface. They didn't really do anything. Also just feel like every side character in this book wasn't great. They weren't, they weren't the best character, just not keeping in account the feelings of our main character at all. None of them, almost all of them, use our main character for their own game. And I feel like only a couple of those characters were actually criticized within the text. Then the next book that I read is There's Something About Sweetie by Sanya Manon, which I gave five of her stars. This book is the second book in the Vendepoma to Rishi companion series. And this book follows Rishi's younger brother, who's it's called a she's, a she's <laughs> and he's kind of been a player all his life, but now recently has gotten into a serious relationship and has been cheated on. So now he's heartbroken, lost his mojo with everything in life. So he asks his parents to set him up with a girl and the parents set him up with Sweetie. Sweetie is a plus sized athlete and her mom rejects the offer from Asisha's parents and Sweetie goes behind her mom's back and meets up with Asisha anyway and they have a cute romance and fuck my life this was every day. <laughs> so I read this on my commute for the first couple of days of school. This started before school so I absolutely flew through this. I love it so much. It was just so cute. Asish and Sweetie are amazing main characters that I love following. I think I think Sonia Renan is great at is talk is discussing more complicated family relationships. And I feel like this book did that really well as well. Because Sweetie has a difficult relationship with her mother around her weight. Overall I really like the discussions around being plus size in this book because Sweetie does have insecurities about her weight, the her looks. But none of that is attached to I need to lose weight, which I really appreciate. And Asish was a sweetheart. I loved him. Oh my god. He was fantastic. He, I also loved the insecurities that came with him because he had the insecurities of going into a relationship again after his heart being like shattered to pieces. And I think that was a very interesting thing to discuss in this book, especially from the guy's perspective. I feel like we never get that from a guy's perspective in YA. So... I really appreciated that rap in there as well. And then the last book I read this month is Love at First Sight, Love at First Fight by Sandra Manon, which I gave four to five stars and this is a novella set in between the Something with Sweetie and Ten Things Later Pinky, which is the final book in the series. And it follows like the couples of the three books, even though from the last book they're still friends, going to an escape room on Valentine's Day. And it just it's really short, it's like sixty pages I believe, and it's not a lot to it, but <laughs> I just really liked just seeing these characters interact and be themselves. I don't know, I just I flew through it, had a great time with it. There's a lot of fun. So if you're a fan of these characters, you will really enjoy this novella, but for the rest, it's not necessary at all to understand anything. And yeah, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I told you it was gonna be a short one. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of these. If you've read any of these books, which you thought of them, so I'll some of the books you read in September, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Good. Bye.